For those of you tuning in right now by YouTube, I'm talking about secondary guns here on the Handgun World Podcast on episode 620. I do want to get to another listener email first, though. Paul sends me an email and he says, Bob, I've listened to your show for a short while and you talk a lot about shadow systems guns. Here's a shadow systems gun that I really like. It's my favorite. Well, I came across one at a very good price. My question to you is, what holsters are you using? The good thing about most Shadow Systems guns, or all the Shadow Systems guns, is they fit into Glock holsters. So if you have a holster for, like for example, this is a Shadow Systems MR920. It'll fit into a Glock 19 holster. And I have a couple of different Kydex holsters, Paul. Uh, Concealment Solutions, they were a long-time sponsor. I use their uh, Cobra Outside the Waistband holster. I prefer carrying Outside the Waist in South Texas, here where I live. Not too many people. Even if I did print and even if people saw that I was carrying a gun, most of them don't really care too much. Matter of fact, a lot of them might appreciate it. How many of you have ever run into that? Um, You know, it's probably impossible to never get made when you're carrying a handgun. But if you live in a gun-friendly area like I do, sometimes they're going to say, Hey, you know what? Hey, sir, thank you for uh, doing what you do because, you know, you're helping to protect us. And, you know, they should be carrying a gun themselves, but... For various reasons, sometimes they're not. Cobra outside the waistband holsters. Any inside the waistband holster that you use, Paul, for a Glock 19, for example, is probably going to work for your Shadow Systems MR920. That's the really cool thing. If I'm carrying appendix inside the waistband, I like to use a uh, Keeper's Concealment, a Keeper's Holster. Uh, by KeepersConcealment.com. Spencer Keepers, the founder, he's been a guest here. Spencer Keepers has also contributed a lot to my Patreon page. Several exclusive videos, one of them called Pure Shooting, which is really good. If you want to sharpen your shooting skills, become a Patreon member, support my show at the same time, and watch Spencer Keepers' video on Pure Shooting. It's very good. He's got a couple of others on there about his holsters. So this MR920, this fits in the Keeper's holster made for a Glock 19. Paul, that was a good email. Thank you very much. Now, to the main topic matter. Luke. Luke just sent me an email. A nice one, a long one. I'm not going to cover all of it right now, but I am going to cover the most important parts. Luke says he's been a long-time listener on my show. Luke, I hope you subscribe to the YouTube channel as well. And uh, he basically is, he gave me some positive feedback about my, my positive attitude and the encouraging mindset. I do have an encouraging mindset. I'm a, a positive person, folks. I've grown up all my life being a positive person. When I was a young kid, I had, I shouldn't say kid, <laughs> 25, 26 years old. Some of you listening might be 25 or 26. I don't know. but So maybe I won't call it young kids. But I got a lot of good training when I was younger. And it helped me form a much more positive, open-minded attitude. I've always been a firm believer that your mind is like a parachute. It works best when it's open. You got to have an open mind. If you're a closed minded person, you're probably not going to be successful. Because here's what I've learned somebody is always better than you. Somebody always has another way that might help you become better. If you're not open minded to new and refreshing ideas, it's going to be tough for you to be successful in anything you do. Uh, Luke also thanks me for my references to my faith. Yes, I am a Christian. Yes, I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. He is my Lord and Savior. I I don't apologize for that whatsoever because I shouldn't apologize for that. Now, this is not a religious show, but I just want you to know that I'm a Christian. And so sometimes I'm going to be talking about that because 
Jesus is my Lord and Savior, and he's number one in my life. And when I am not here on this earth anymore, all I want to hear are seven words. And those seven words are, well done, my good and faithful servant. Anyway, Luke says what he's learned the hard way. It's about balance. Balancing preparedness without being paranoid. Ooh, is that a good one, huh? How many of you would agree with that? Balancing preparedness or modern survivalism without being paranoid. Now, I see all kinds of things when it comes to concealed carry. I see people, you know, putting on the internet. Now, one of the things about the internet is we have to remember that even though the internet gives everyone a voice, it doesn't give everybody a brain. Think about that. Um, just so you know, in case you maybe didn't know that not everything on the internet is true. People will get sometimes online and they will put a lot of paranoid stuff on there. And then when they get done putting all their paranoid stuff out there, they'll say something like, well, you know, I got a Glock 17 and I carry three extra magazines, three extra 17 round magazines on my person. And I've got another 200 rounds in my car and and I've got this and I've got that and they just start going on and on and sometimes they come across as being paranoid. Now, is there anything wrong with carrying a Glock 17 and three extra magazines? No, there's not. If you want to, go for it. Carry on. I'm all in favor of that. I want you to do to, to, to think about something though. If you are talking to other people about the Second Amendment, about concealed carry, about their God-given right to defend themselves. And they're kind of on the fence. They're not really sure how they feel about all this concealed carry stuff. Don't hit them with stuff like, well, I got a big, huge gun and I got three 17-round magazines on my belt and that's what you should do you're probably going to put them off. And the last thing that we want to do is we don't want to put people off. We want to bring people into the tent. Do we not? We want to bring people into the Second Amendment tent that's around us. We have power in numbers, folks. We have power in numbers. I've always believed that. I've said that for the 13 years that I've done my show. We have power in numbers. What I mean is the more of us out there that carry firearms, the more concealed carriers that we have, the more Second Amendment advocates that we have, the more powerful we're going to be, the more powerful our cause and our movement is going to be. Would you agree? I'm a professional salesperson. That's my regular job. This, this is just kind of like a side job for me. And there's power in numbers I've learned as a salesperson. 36 years now, I think. Uh, 30, almost 37 years I've been selling. And there's one thing that I've learned about being in sales. And this actually applies to life. The more activity that I do, the better I get and the luckier I get. The more activity. Uh, people say, well, luck is when preparation meets opportunity. You know, something like that. Well, I found that the luckier I get, it's because of my activity. The more I do, the more chances I have to be successful. Now, I want to be good at what I do. It's not only a numbers game, but the numbers are part of it. You have to have the numbers. It's the same thing, I believe, with the Second Amendment community. I hope you'd agree. The more numbers we have, the more effective we're going to be. Now, we have to learn to be more effective uh, communicators and persuaders, uh, persuading people that the Second Amendment is important, that their self-defense is important, that to preserve a free people, to preserve a free society, we have to have a Second Amendment. That's why the Founding Fathers uh, put that in the Constitution. That's why it was ratified. So, let's get the numbers going. And 
When it comes to secondary guns, I want to get back on top on topic. Luke mentioned something about secondary guns and backup guns. And he says, what I mean is sometimes we carry a larger than typical gun for protection against animals. Animals and other threats. In like in open terrain, for example, or when you're in the, the woods. He says, I find it convenient to have a secondary, smaller gun available when I get into camp or go into a grocery store, for example. Um, Now, let's talk a little bit about secondary guns. Luke didn't bring this up in his email, but this is my Ruger LCP. LCP 2, by the way, the 2 version. This is a fantastic pocket gun and I put it into this DeSantis pocket holster and I carry this as a secondary gun a lot this is my secondary gun this thing is I think one of the best little mouse guns that's typically what they're called that you can buy because of the trigger because of the grip because of the quality because of usable sights on it and everything it's hard to go wrong with this as a secondary gun A primary gun would be something like this Shadow Systems MR920 that I own. About the same size, in fact, the same size as a Glock 19. Another gun that I often carry is this SIG P365XL. This is the XL version. Luke goes on to say in his email, The need for handheld lights. It's also important as a secondary carry item, uh, a handheld light. Oh man, Luke, I'm so glad you brought this up. I'm so glad that you talked about flashlights, secondary lights, the need for handheld lights. Now, a lot of people like to have a weapons mounted light. That's okay, but don't Don't only rely on a weapons-mounted light. It shouldn't be the only type of light that you have. Luke goes on to say, frequently we need to identify an issue before we ever point a gun at it. That's so true. If you have a weapons-mounted light and you're using it to try to identify, well, guess what you're doing? You're pointing that gun at a person or something that may not need to have a gun pointed on them at that time. Uh, Luke says, what if it's a a bump in the night and you think that there's danger in your house and it's a teenager going through the refrigerator trying to find something to eat? Do you want to identify the teenager by using your weapons mounted light and pointing the whole gun and the light at the teenager? Why not have a handheld light like this or something similar? I have a Streamlight ProTac. 2LX. Let me get my glasses here. Make sure that I'm reading that correctly. Yeah, it's a Streamlight ProTec 2LX. What a fantastic light. I think it's like 200 lumens or something like that. I always have this light. Always. No matter what I'm wearing, no matter where I'm going. I've been through TSA. I've been through airlines. I've been on flights with this light. Only once I've been asked... Why do I have a flashlight? I joke around and say it's because I'm afraid of the dark. They usually laugh and move on. I've never had this taken away in any security place whatsoever. It is nothing but a flashlight. Could I use this as a striking weapon? Absolutely. Okay, but it's often good, like Luke says, I need to identify with a handheld light something before you start pointing a gun at it one-handed manipulation luke talks about if i were identify if i were to identify the biggest weakness in training it regard it's regarding gun handling it would be the skill set to manipulate the weapon one-handed wow what a good subject thank you very much and this kind of does tie into secondary guns because this is a secondary method of gun handling when ben branham and i were very active in teaching our classes that we called beyond concealed carry we had a, a class called beyond concealed carry advanced 
In the advanced class, we did teach one-handed, one-handed manipulation. How to rack the slide off of your belt, by the way. If you have the right kind of sights, if you have the right kind of rear sights that have a good enough ledge, you can rack it off your belt. You can rack the slide using your holster, using your belt. Um, if there's a bench or a chair in front of you, we taught them how to run the slide and run the gun doing that. Even clearing malfunctions one-handed. Yes, you can do that. That's things that you need to learn. Now, for those of you that are watching me on YouTube right now, um, a little over 15 minutes has gone by. And I like to try to keep these videos down to about 15 minutes. So I'm going to invite you to subscribe to the audio version of this podcast, handgunworld.com or anywhere you get podcasts. Wherever you get podcasts, search for Handgun World Podcast. Get subscribed to my audio version. You'll also notice, this is for everybody, go to handgunworld.com. You can get email updates. You can get email updates. Every time I post a new episode, you can get an email notification. Furthermore, uh, I have an eight-page article that I wrote. It's a concealed carry guide. And I wrote an eight-page article on concealed carry tips and also giving you some ideas if you want to persuade somebody about the Second Amendment. You can get that free just by going to my website, handgunworld.com, and you'll see right there in the menu, subscribe to get my free concealed carry guide. It will automatically email you the PDF of my document. Read it. Tell me what you think. I wrote it, and uh, it's all from a lot. There's a lot of facts that I've researched and put in there. My opinion's also in there, but check it out. Please like this video. Subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. Please remember to give me some Patreon support so I can keep making these videos and these audio podcasts. I'm going to say goodbye to everybody that's watching me on YouTube right now. Thank you.